If you're into field recording or if you are a sound designer, you know how popular MS rigs are. And for a very good reason, recording with this technique is a proven recipe to achieve very flexible results. And the equipment needed is often very small, so it can lead to a very compact package that is ideal to be carried around for field recording purposes. There are obviously already a lot of information about recording MS online, but considering what a really essential tool it is, I am kind of surprised that there are no more information specifically about recording sound effects with it. So if you're a sound designer interested in learning how to use MS, hopefully you will find this video full of very useful information. Here's what we're going to cover today, and obviously feel free to use the timestamps in the description below to skip ahead if you're interested in a specific topic. Number one, we'll have a look at the basics of recording with the mid-sides technique. Number two, we'll have a look at what I believe are the most common combination of microphones that you'll find among field recordists that carry around MS rigs for recording in the field. And number three, I will show you my very own MS rig, which is a much more budget-friendly solution. Let's get started. Midside is a stereo recording technique invented by Alan Bloomline, which involves capturing sound with two microphones of different polar pattern, typically a cardioid or hypercardioid for the mid channel and a figure eight for the sides. The idea here is to use the mid channel as the central microphone pointed directly to the source and use the side channel rotated 90 degrees from the source to capture directionality and a bit of ambience. If you're using a pair of large diaphragm condensers in the studio, it might look something like this. Whereas if you're using a pair of small diaphragm condensers, it might look something like this, uh, which is my setup, but more on this later. Recording these two channels, however, is only the first part of the story. The second part involves decoding or matrixing them. Uh, let me explain what I mean. There is some very straightforward maths involved, which I will spare you for the purpose of this video, but if you're interested in digging deeper, I will link uh, to a couple of very good articles about this topic, one from Sound on Sounds magazine and one from the SHIPS website uh, in the description down below. Feel free to check them out. Now, let's actually try this and let's see how it sounds. All you need to do is to take your mid channel and pan it that center. Then grab your side channel, pan it all the way to the left, duplicate it, pan that one all the way to the right and invert the face of the duplicate. Now we can lay out the tracks in Reaper and I'm going to route the two sides to another track so I can control both with just one fader and if I want, process it separately. And this ability to tweak what you record in post-production is what makes MS recordings so incredibly cool and flexible. With XY or ORTF, you are pretty much stuck with what you recorded in the field. And on top of that, if you sum the two channels to mono, you can actually incur in some pretty nasty face cancellation issues. With MS recordings instead, you have pretty much full control over the stereo width of the recorded that you imported in your DAW, simply by changing the amount of uh, signal from the side channel versus the amount of signal from the mid channel. And you you can get anything from a fully mono file all the way to a stereo file with plenty of environment and directional information. Let's talk about what kind of microphones you can expect to find in an MS rig. In the studio to record music rather than sound effects, for example, you will almost always find a pair of large diaphragm condensers. Uh, very often these studio microphones uh, have multi-pattern ca capabilities. You would set one to cardioid and another one to figure eight. Or alternatively, you will find a, a large diaphragm condenser 
paired with a small Dorafran condenser, either as cardioid or as figure of eight. This is obviously a very impractical package to bring on the field. Uh, studio microphones like that are typically rather bulky, they're large, they're heavy, they're very delicate, and you couldn't find a suitable wind protection to bring them out in the field. For this very reason, in a field record this rig, you would typically find two small diaphragm condensers, a cardioid and a figure eight, with the cardioid sometimes replaced by an hypercardioid or by a shotgun. And just for reference, we're gonna talk more in detail about my setup later on in the video, but this is the figure eight, this is the cardioid, and sometimes I replace that cardioid with this shotgun. A shotgun is a much longer microphone like this and you would fit everything in something like this for wind protection which is known as a blimp. There are a couple of different rigs that I see absolutely everywhere, one by ships and one by Sennheiser and I think it's quite useful uh, to know what is considered industry standard, to know what the professionals typically use. The first pair of microphones I see all the time is the Schoeps CCM8 used as sides with the CCM4 or 41 used as mid. The 4 is the cardioid and the 41 is the hypercardioid model of the CCM series. And the second one is the combination of the Sennheiser MKH30 and 40. And bear in mind that as I said before you will find variants of these setups using shotguns instead of cardioids or hypercardioids as the mid channel. Now, if you're interested in putting together a MS rig using any of the microphones that I mentioned, uh, you might want to know that while ships made available a few years ago a new line of microphones using a super compact new modular system, Sennheiser did exactly the same only for their 20, 40, and 50 models. Uh, so there isn't currently a figure eight microphone by Sennheiser using the new modular system. This is important to know because if you want to use the 8040 as the mid channel for a Sennheiser MS rig, you will have to fit it together uh, with the MKH30, which is their old figure eight, which is a very, very good microphone, but is much larger. The footprint is quite different from the 8040. That said, Sennheiser did preview their 8030, the figure eight using the new modular system last September, and it should come up at some point uh, in 2020. 24, I guess. I've used a bunch of these microphones. I think I've used pretty much uh, everything that I mentioned. I've at least tried it at some point. And I used to own a matched pair of 8040s by Sennheiser, which I really loved. And they do have a personal preference for the Sennheiser sound, uh, but again, this is just personal preference. You will find just as many sound designers that instead prefer ships, which are really uh, high quality microphones. And the last thing that I want to mention before we move to the last point where we explore my rig is that if you record music as well as sound effects like I do all the time, these microphones make beautiful choices for recording instruments as well, especially acoustic instruments. The 8040 was a favorite of mine on strings and solo woodwinds. As Sonora Cinematic, which is my sampling company, my partner Joe uh, recorded the cello with a ships CCM4 which was absolutely beautiful sounding uh, so don't think that these microphones are just flat and clinical and you can only use them uh, for recording sound effects these are fantastic uh, instrument microphones the problem with putting together a ships or a Sennheiser rig is you guessed it, cost. By the time you bought the pair of microphones and fit them into a mounting solution and bought some wind protection, even leaving aside the recorder, you are well into a four or $5,000 budget, which is a lot of money. I have been looking at putting together an MS rig for a very long time. I wanted something that I could take out in the field and I could keep in the studio without worrying too much. And I struggled finding one for a very long time, mostly because there are not very many figure eight small diaphragm condensers on the market. 
This is quite surprising to me. You would think that companies like Rode or Shure uh, would make a figure eight capsule to fit into uh, their NT5 uh, system, for example, for Rode. But it just isn't the case. Uh, there are just not very many figure eight microphones on the market. My guess is simply that there is not much demand for it. The only solution that I could find is a little microphone by Ambient. Here it is, the Emesser ATE-308. This little guy isn't exactly cheap at eight, nine hundred dollars, depending on where you get it, but it's still half the price of a Sherp CCM8, for example. And it really opened lots of options for me, especially considering that they already own several microphones that they could use for the mid channel. Let me show you a couple of combinations uh, for an MS rig that is very affordable using this microphone. The first option would be to pair it with a Rode NTG5. This is uh, my shotgun of choice. Um, I used to own uh, a Sennheiser MKH416, which is a much more expensive microphone. I think it's about double as that. And you will find it in pretty much any uh, Foley stage in the world. It's a very, very, very common uh, microphone for recording sound effects. However, I don't particularly like it. At least the 416 that I used to own uh, had very harsh mids and highs that I had to always EQ. And this little Rode uh, NTG5 actually sounds a little more natural natural to me and I quite like pairing it with the Emesser. And the second combination is to pair the Emesser with a microphone I believe everybody should own, a Line Audio CM4. I own two of them, they are super affordable and they sound so good. Line Audio is a very small company based in Sweden, in fact I believe it's just one person unless it grew in recent years. And the CM4 is a very high quality microphone which is known for having a perfectly flat uh, response across the spectrum, which makes it excellent for recording sound effects. In fact, I don't know why it isn't used more for recording sound effects. And just look at how small and compact the combination of the CM4 and the AT-308 is. It's fantastic. Now, obviously, this setup does have its limits. For example, doesn't have the very big uh, bass response that I used to have with my uh, Sennheiser rig. And at the same time, it doesn't go as easily into uh, ultrasonic uh, territory, if that's something that you're interested in doing. But I can assure you that I have done a ton of professional work with it and is a perfectly workable rig. The last thing that you need to factor in if you want to get into MS recordings is obviously to find a suitable recorder. I am absolutely not going to do a deep dive into all the recorders that are available on the market. You will find lots of comparison online. I'm just going to say that if you want to look at top notch industry standard, you can look at the offering by sound devices. Pretty much anything by sound devices is absolutely fantastic. Also costs a lot of money. Uh, the uh, Zoom F series is becoming very popular and is excellent. I have an F3 that I'm going to talk about in a second. There is also the Tascam Porta Capture series. The new X6 and X8 are both excellent. There is really a lot of choice on the market. The only hard requirement for recording MS uh, is obviously the possibility of recording two channels of audio with the best preamps uh, that you can afford. That's pretty much it. However, if you remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about decoding and I explained you uh, how to do it in uh, your digital audio workstation in post-production. Having the coding capabilities in the box built in in the recorder comes very, very handy uh, when recording because that will obviously allow you to monitor, to hear uh, what you are recording in stereo, which is kind of important. Unfortunately, not all recorders have MS uh, decoding capabilities that are built in. The Zoom F3, for example, which is a recorder which I really love because it's so portable and so powerful, it doesn't have uh, MS decoding capabilities, which I think is a real shame. I still use it occasionally uh, to record MS, and what I do is to just monitor uh, the mid channel and basically listen to what I'm recording in mono and hope for the best. 
The Porta Capture X8, on the other end, not only has MS uh, decoding capabilities, you can also record what you're decoding in real time so that you uh, can export both a ready to go a stereo version of MS single and the single channel mid -and side, mid -and um, side independently if you want to tweak them in post, which is really handy. This concludes our exploration of MS. I really hope uh, you enjoyed it and found it useful. Uh, I love MS personally. It doesn't have the width of XY or ORTF. However, it's so flexible that it's an essential tool when uh, recording SFX. And I really hope you found this useful. I am actually thinking about recording a second video where we can explore the more creative options when it comes to processing the two channels uh, separately so ms as a sound design tool if you want mm, let me know if you'd be interested in watching that in the comment i would really love it if you could subscribe to the channel uh, let me know if you're finding these videos useful in the comments uh, you will have noticed that i shifted my focus a little bit uh, from music into sound design uh, this is just because it's an area that i'm working a lot in uh, at the moment so i want to uh, share my thoughts on it if it's something that i've always done and i just getting uh, back uh, into it but don't worry there is also a lot of uh, more music focused content coming and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time